we can't continue to act like grief is taboo because everybody goes through it. It touches everybody. There's not a, it don't matter how much money you got, it don't matter your what job you have, what color you are, grief is gonna touch your life at one point or another. My name is Shalika Smith, and I'm the author of Grief I Didn't Sign Up For This. It's a collection of stories for myself and 33 other people sharing our grief experience. What led me to write the book was my nephew and my brother died two months apart from each other, and I always felt like when people shared their grief stories with me, that I felt relieved to know that I wasn't alone in on my grief journey. So we don't do that enough, and I believe that if we did it more, that it would just help people and ourselves. So I wanted to create a space for people to share their grief experiences to be able to release and then for people to read about those grief experiences and know that they had someone to relate to. The reality is grief is a fingerprint and no experience is the same as anyone else's. People can be grieving the same person, but depending on the relationship, their experiences with losing that person might be different. So it's really important to understand the person and not the situation. So, and also just knowing the people that you are supporting and work, what works for them even during their grief journey and what doesn't. So one of the things I try to always encourage people to do is just let them talk through their own situation because sometimes we just need a safe space to be able to talk we don't have organized thoughts and we don't have a plan, but we just need to get some of those things from the, that are on the inside of us out. So getting people to share and as they share different things that they would like to do with their loved one when their loved one was alive and things that were important, encouraging them to continue to do those things because that can help them always remember the person. I think historically for African-American people, we have never been encouraged to outwardly express things that were going on around us. The trauma that we experienced, we've had to suffer in silence. So we passed that very toxic thing down from generation to generation of you don't express it, you move on. And the reality is that's the worst advice that we can give people is to act like it didn't happen. So one of the things that I encourage people to do is just take a moment and settle into this new reality. You get to express yourself. You get to feel. You don't have to rush back into work and, you know, all the different responsibilities. Those things are going to always be there. But the reality is you have to learn to live differently now. This is a new reality for you, so we have to adjust, and it's okay to pause. It's okay to take a leave of absence from work. Um, it's okay just to really let those emotions set in, because very often they're emotions that we've never experienced before. So to be in this very new place and to try to use your old self in this new place is just not beneficial for your grief journey and your process through you. When someone dies, there is the trauma of losing that person. When we add the responsibilities of funeral planning and cleaning out someone's house and sorting things out and you have siblings that aren't getting along and there's so many different components on top of the grief, it is overwhelming. And a lot of times what you see in different families when there's friction is not necessarily division amongst the family. It's that we're in this really crazy place that we've never been in before and we don't know how to do the basic thing. No one is a professional funeral planner. No one does this for fun. We don't go to school for it. We don't learn how to do it. We don't learn how to. And in our culture, 
We don't teach our children the importance of making sure that you have a will, making sure that you have insurance, making sure that there's things that are in place so that it takes the burden off the people that have to handle your business once you're gone. It takes the pressure off. If you care anything about the people that love you, the best thing that you can do is take some of the pressure off of them and plan ahead. There's there's organizations, funeral homes will help you to do things and pay on things early if money is an issue. But making the effort to make sure that when you die, the biggest thing that someone has to worry about is just losing you versus the business and financial aspect of it. I think that's really beautiful. I think we do need to also have conversations about you're going to die. It's inevitable. Everyone's going to die. What do you want? How do you want me to remember you? How do you want, what do you want your funeral to look like? What do you want your aftercare to look like? Who gets your house? Do you own your house? Who gets your car? Do you own your car? Is there some bill collectors that you owe that are going to be looking for me because you didn't pay this or that? And I think those are really honest conversations and good conversations to have. And I wish that as a community, we were more open to having those conversations because it just saves people on the back.